Good evening, YouTube. I've got my eraser there, I haven't done a lot to that. Still trying to get that epoxy pin out. I just need to get this crank off. If I can get it off this side, the rest of it's not a problem. So, uh, I just need to fight to get the pin out this side so I can get this crank off. Then I can start making some progress on it and putting it back together. Uh, it's been a slow day. I've posted a parcel off. That USB 3 expansion bay thing. I found that and posted that today. Uh, got a few extra things up on eBay. I've got um, three more items that I can list. Wish it was more, but eBay won't lift the fucking limits. <clears throat> Yet they want me to improve my seller status. I would if I could flip and sell. <laughs> flip and sell. <laughs> don't know where that starter came from. <laughs> I can flip and sell. <clears throat> they restrict you because of previous issue or issues. And then they want you to improve your seller standard by selling, but you can't because you're restricted, so I'm not sure how that works. I'm restricted to 10 items a month or a hundred pounds, the equivalent to a hundred pounds. So if I put one item on for a hundred pounds, that would be my monthly limit done. It's whichever comes first. Which is annoying as fuck. Because <laughs> uh, I have to say, I used to enjoy selling on eBay, you know, making them that extra bit of cash to spend back on eBay. That's what I usually do with it. Oh well. I suppose I've still got the ability to sell, so I can't complain too much, can I? It's not often that I sell nowadays, anyway. But uh, I've got some... <coughs> couple of pieces of VIC-20 computer software. I won't have a VIC-20 computer and probably will never get one, so it's no good to me. Uh, and some booklets on it, I'll put those up. An old Polaroid camera and a pair of binoculars. They were all given to me and I ain't really got a use, I just stuck them up for pennies, basically, the binoculars and the camera. Is it two pounds I've put them up? Start bid. Seven days, so they'll end when I next get paid, so... Which is actually good, because that means I'll have my payment to pay for the postage. I haven't got to transfer any cash. I can just leave it in my PayPal. So... My plan is just to actually get as much cash together on there. <coughs> and, uh, put it into buying something. I'm not sure what yet. But I do want a tape deck. Yep, I've decided. I'm going to take the black audio amplifier flyer. Audio Amplifier. I've really got a speech impediment tonight, haven't I? The Audio Amplifier from here, and put that in the bedroom. And I can can connect the phono to this, or the record player to this. Um, then I wouldn't need, won't need to find um, a separate set of speakers. Plus... I can buy the tape deck and connect that to the amplifier and a tuner if I wanted to or a CD deck or anything like that if I really wanted to. Let's have that all stacked up the corner. Um, I am watching one on eBay. The seller says it works but he's got it up for buy it now. 
ten pounds. Which to me seems rather cheap, and I'm surprised no one's snapped it up yet. Postage is eight pounds, it's a bit steep, so I'm not sure if he's going to use a carrier or Royal Mail. I guess from the price Royal Mail, because that goes a large parcel, probably Parcel Force or something. This parcel Force is owned by Royal Mail. And it's one of the most expensive carriers you can actually use. Anyway, um, so that's the plan. You know, I figured I've got the equipment here. I might as well make use of it instead of trying to find hard to find bloody speakers and whatnot. That would probably be um, a pretty penny in themselves. Uh, never mind. Because, uh, I don't know, I might look, have another look for the whole stereo system as well and just get the whole stereo system. If I can find one for a good price. I have them on eBay. Um, so it's just a matter of looking, I suppose. I was just thinking, do I really need the full hi-fi when... I only really want the tape deck to play tapes on. And I can put the uh, speakers up on each corner of that top shelf. Have the amplifier sitting here. The record deck sitting here where it was originally. Until I moved it for some room for other stuff on here. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Tape deck on top of the um, audio amp. And like I said, I could get a radio tuner for it as well and uh, have my own sort of home picked stereo up the corner um, I would get a record deck for it as well but well, one I've got one and two they're actually quite expensive they're uh, not going cheap these days uh, I'm gonna get internet over here soon that was on the wall over there, but I decided to move it because I actually use these PCs and I wouldn't mind having internet access for them plus sometimes when I use my laptop the Wi-Fi is a pain in the ass and slow so I have got an ethernet cable running under there which I'll reroute I hope uh, I hope anyway that's the plan so I did that yesterday I rerouted that ethernet cable, I've just got to it up onto that wall up there. Tomorrow I'm taking a photo of this lamp and it can go on free cycle. Um, I'll try those monitors on free cycle as well. If someone can make use of them, they're welcome to them. Ugh. That crank is the one I want to put on that racer when I can get the old one off. Yeah, get it off, clean up all the frame. Put it all back together again. That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan, but it's not quite going to plan at the moment. I sort of hit a snag with that bloody doodah crank. And that snag is, it doesn't want to come off. Why is there holes punched on the top of this? Hmm. Right. I don't want that anyway. So. Bim. Right. And that hi fi there. Still to dissect. Uh, the fair's gone quiet. That's good. So they had a friggin' air horn. I don't know whose bright idea the air horn was, but they had a friggin' air horn. And there's no, I think Cat Zilla's been running around on here because I found another lamppost that should be standing. But. There's no black base to it, so where the hell has that gone? It's supposed to be standing over here somewhere. Like that. <clears throat> I'm supposed to have two little black bricks on the bottom. They've sort of uh, done a vanishing act. I bet that's when Nemo runs up and down that stretch. Clunk, 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 clunk. Uh, 
sorted that red box for Lego out. That's now full of white bricks. As you can see. The two stud wide bricks. And I can't of I had so many of them and it was either the red or the white and I just felt the white would go better in there. Because the box is red. <laughs> uh, so I've got two uh I've got tin full of red bricks and other stuff on the top there as well under that paperwork. I've got to go in my box of overflow stuff, which is under there somewhere, I believe. Pens. Well those today, because mine mine has disappeared. I've got a pen gremlin in this house. Flat rather, apartment, whatever you want to call it. Home. <laughs> Sticky labels for this, 510 in total, 30 on each sheet, and there's uh, 17 sheets. So according to my calculator, that makes it 510 labels. Ah, oh, pardon me. So I can actually go through and uh, do some more labelling. I keep forgetting where things are. A lot of it I can see. When I look at the drawers, I can actually see. Um... No, the steering wheels, for example, I didn't really need to label those, but I did anyway. That switch I'm going to raise, so I can get some these ones, some of these ones stacked in there. <coughs> well, at least two more stacked in there. <sighs> well, that beach hut built. I think that will end up on my beach. It's the third one I built out of the set. And it's the one I like the most. I don't really see the point in this, but this is a bit disappointing. There's no... It's just an empty space in there that looks nice, you know. As a play set, that's disappointing because uh, you can't do anything with that upstairs. But for display purposes, it's fine. You know, you can open the back door up to access the inside. It's just got a bench and a table. Two doors, for some reason. Yeah. I like the effect of, uh, you know, water splashing that they do on this. Well, that would actually, you know, I could tip that straight onto the beach. Towards the back of the beach. When I've got said beach cleared. <laughs> and so that's one reason I bought it, because I wanted to use one of the three builds on the beach. That does look quite a fancy uh, beach hut, doesn't it? I mean, I, could, I can do my own modifications to this. I could take this door out, for example, and which I think I will. I do like these arches here. Now I could put this whole section over here. Uh, I don't know, I'll think about that. All these bits left over from the set. Look. Two figures. One boy, one girl. Okay. <laughs> way past level 66. Now me and a friend are playing a game on Facebook called Cookie Cats. It's not actually a bad game. Okay, I'm hungry, it's late at night, I don't want to eat, and I've just seen food posted. Cheers! You've got food in your dish. Don't take the Mickey. 
Actually, speaking of taking the Mickey, I was um, on one of the Lego groups, one of a group that um, specifically is for selling Lego. And there was someone on there put a set on there, a Lego set. It's a Lego set you can still go out in the shops and buy. You can still buy it from the Legos, the official Lego website. It's a Lego Technic set, and it's the Porsche. I can't remember specifically what Porsche, but it is a Porsche. And uh, they put it up on this for sale group. £325 including postage. Now, I thought that was rather high for that set. So me being me, went across to the lego.com website and searched it. It's out of stock, but they are accepting back orders. So you can order it, and I'll uh, ship it to you as soon as it comes into stock. £249, brand new from Lego. So I've heard of people buying things and upping the price, but that takes the fucking piss. Especially when I can go out and buy the damn thing brand spanking new from Lego themselves for a damn sight cheaper, including postage. I think Lego's postage is something like £5 or something. So for £254, I could have got it posted. <laughs> Why people have to do that? Do they think people are thick as shit? Needless to say, that post is gone now. So I don't know if the admins deleted it or if they deleted it themselves. But Yeah, to me, that took the rise a bit. That time Stone Cold destroyed everyone. Wrestling was, uh, and still is, entertaining, but it still acted. So it didn't destroy anyone. It was all scripted. He hit them, they fell, basically. <laughs> but like I said, it's entertaining. It is entertaining. I always used to love wrestling. It didn't even put me off when it all came to light that it was all scripted and um, choreographed and whatnot. Uh, you know, who cares if it's entertaining you good I don't particularly like watching um, shows like Big Brother or Britain's Got Talent or The X Factor because what well, I call them reality shows but most of them are rigged to high heaven anyway and it's all set up and even the bad acts are all set up for entertainment purposes, you know. So it's not really, to me, it's not really a reality show, it's a load of fucking bollocks. And it's almost a guarantee that The X Factor will get Christmas number one every year. Yeah, those shows don't really interest me. There's lots of people on my Facebook that still watch, I mean, it's entirely up to them what they watch. I still poke fun and say how crap they are, but I am just poking fun, you know, I'm just yanking a few chains, as the chains, as they say. Jesus. I got false teeth in tonight? Teeth? Hmm. Maybe my overbite is causing a bit more problems than I thought it was. Either that or I've just got a lazy mouth. Um. I don't know if Mum's got a phone. My phone hasn't rang yet. It's nearly 25 past 11. <coughs> I think the fare stops at about 10. I've got a fucking air horn this year. So every five to ten minutes I just hear a very loud air horn go off. <coughs> oh well. It's only for a few nights a year, so I'll be moving on Sunday. It's 
quite nice watching all the trucks roll in and roll out. They've got some nice trucks. You know, they haven't just got like um, four by fours towing caravans. They've got big ass um, big rigs, big rig type mobile homes or whatever you want to call them. You know, it's about the size of an articulated lorry trailer. That sort of size, sort of um, thing you'd probably find on a film set. That probably cost absolutely thousands. You know, it's towed by a tractor unit. Yeah, there was a couple of those rolled in on Sunday. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Does a fun fair rake in that much cash that they can actually buy such things? It must have, because all the other vehicles with all the smaller caravans and whatnot, they were pretty much new. Um, but they also own, the family that owns the fun fair also own two arcades in Chroma, the Boating Lake in Chroma, I think I've already said this, uh, there's a few other seasonal things in Chroma that they have as well, it's quite a well-known family, <coughs> and they've been running the fun fair for a lot of years as well, I didn't used to, well, when my mum was little, they used to come to North Wales, and then they stopped for several years. But then they restarted, coming back. <clears throat> hmm. What else? Planning! My town is expanding, houses-wise, anyway. We've got one current development that's building I think it's 150 homes, I think they said. Um, <clears throat> and apparently there's another two or three developers wanting to develop land on the same stretch of road with houses going into the hundreds. Um, Right outside where a friend of mine lives, they want to build 200 houses. And it's in a field on the edge of town. Um, my only concern with that is that one of the roads that borders the development doesn't have a footpath. Well, it does for a couple of hundred metres. Then, for about 300 metres, no footpath. Actually, no, not 300 metres. Probably mm, 100 odd metres, no footpath. Um, so, with the introduction of extra houses and likely families walking into town, it does worry me because there's a lot of people who use that road on foot, um, ducking and diving in and out of people's driveways to avoid traffic because buses go up and down that road as well so do big rigs because it's the only route they have to get to the industrial estate which doesn't involve going or trying to squeeze under low railway bridges there is rail a railway bridge on this particular road but it's the highest one in town not that that matters, because a truck about a month or so ago did hit the bridge and completely took his shipping container off the trailer. I was just sitting in the road. <laughs> <clears throat> Although someone, I shared that news report on a trucker's group, and someone said that the container obviously wasn't uh, secured properly in the first place, because it shouldn't have come off. <clears throat> Anyway, um, some people are concerned about all these houses because they're concerned that uh, current doctors' clinics and uh, schools can't cope 
with the influx of extra families, etc., moving in. Um, but they're also concerned about the road network being able to cope as well. Because if you think about it, the one that's currently being built, that's 150 houses, that's at least a hun another 150 cars. Then you've got this other development that's just come up recently for 200 homes. That's another 200 cars. Plus, right next to that plot, they want to build up to another 200 homes. So that's now 550 extra cars on our very tiny and tight road network <laughs> with damn shitty outdated junctions. But as the town's clerk said, for the, for the council to consider it viable to improve the roads, you need the houses there, otherwise they're not going to improve them. Or at least need confirmed planning that they're going to be built, etc. Before the council will even consider making adjustments to the roads and investing in the roads. So, I mean, the roads are struggling. I've been riding on the roads around here for, <laughs> well, since about 1997, and trust me, I've noticed the difference in volume of traffic. And there's lots of things that don't help. And there was actually an improvement to a junction. Well, I'll say improvement to a junction that's actually made things a lot worse. Because it used to go down to what we call a mini roundabout, which is basically just a painted circle. Or it could be a raised mound. Um... And you used to be able to go down to this roundabout and either filter off to the left or filter to the right. It was wide enough for cars to filter in both directions. And that kept traffic flowing reasonably well. But when they improved the junction, some dipstick decided to make this specific junction narrower so only one car could get in there. So if the traffic is queued, no traffic can fill around to the right. Any traffic wanting to go to the right has to wait in the queue with everyone else. And that's causing tailbacks. <laughs> so yeah, some dipstick architect or designer didn't think that one through. <clears throat> I think of anything else before I go. Shut the camera off, talk to a couple of people on Facebook. See if the phone rings. Ring, ring. I'm surprised it hasn't. It usually does when I'm on the phone. On the, phone. On the camera. Jesus. I am actually feeling rather tired at the moment. Um, drinking that milk is actually... Um, my burps. I was burping like a trooper earlier and took a few swigs of that and that seems to have uh, settled it. And I can't remember if I've taken my pill this evening or not. I'm going to go with I did. <laughs> I hope. Right. I'm going to disappear for the night. He must have got his back to me. Oi. <laughs> I pressed the button and activated the cat using sleep mode. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to disappear and call it a night. It won't be long before I go to bed. And I hope Mum doesn't decide to ring when I'm in bed. She's done that before as well. It gets so late that I don't think she's going to call, so I bug her off to bed and then she calls. <laughs> I don't know if she's working tomorrow, to be honest.
don't know what shifts are this one. Anyway, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you again soon. Bye.